You're listening to the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill McIntyre, and it's time for this week's Long Island News, the show that talks to newsmakers and other important people from Nassau and Suffolk County that matter to Long Island and Long Islanders like you. So each week we'll have a conversation about issues that affect all of us. I live on Long Island just like you, and I want to know more about the people making the big decisions that affect all of us. So this week I'm happy to welcome back to our show Mr. Joseph S. Saladino, the supervisor of the town of Oyster Bay, who's running for re-election this upcoming election day on the Republican ticket. He has been in this role since January of 2017, and prior to serving as town supervisor, he served residents in the New York State Assembly for six terms. Well, Mr. Saladino, welcome back to this week's Long Island News. It's such a pleasure to be with you, Bill, and be with all your listeners. This, I promise, will be a very fact-filled and a very interesting show. So we asked you to sit back, turn up your volume, and listen to the important important facts and specific information about what we're doing in uh, the town of Oyster Bay, which is one of the largest townships in America. Yeah, I know. Uh, it's always an interesting show when I have you on. Thank you. Don't you have to do that. <laughs> um, okay. Well, so first up, you're running for re-election. Uh, oh, and by the way, I did want to mention that we did this exactly a year ago today. How interesting. Yeah, very, very weird. And this morning you said, uh, you mentioned uh, Roosevelt's uh, yes. Yesterday, we renamed a part of Audrey Avenue in Oyster Bay after President Theodore Roosevelt. Today, I went to his grave with members of the United States Navy, Historical Society, the Sagamore Hill folks from his his home, and we laid a wreath at the president's grave site, which is in Oyster, Oyster Bay. Bay. It's on the National Register. It's so such an important place. Yeah. And I have a lot of Theodore Roosevelt's drive and enthusiasm, and I know that's going to come out during this program. <laughs> Very cool. Um, all right, so you, you, now you recently received the endorsement of Newsday. Um, and the question, you know, it comes up, what, what have you not accomplished that you want to get done A lot of what I'm running for re-election to do, I've been the town supervisor since 2017 when the town was in really desperate shape. And a lot of what we're doing is continuing on the turnaround, making it now one of the best towns in America. I'm going to talk a little bit about the finances. I'm going to talk a lot about the experience of being a town of Oyster Bay resident, whether their uh, listener is a student at Nassau Community College, whether they're a senior citizen, whether they're part of a family, whether they're someone going out and starting their career. The town of Oyster Bay has something for everyone. It's the most most valued town on Long Island. There's very expensive homes. There's also opportunities throughout the town, but it's the greatest experience. Very big. Very big town. We're the third or fourth largest town in America by population. Mm -hmm. And I'm very, very proud of the town, especially let's take a look at where it was in 2017 and where we are today. I'm going to start off with some of the financial facts about the town of Oyster Bay. But if finances aren't your thing, hang in there, listen to (laughs) Bill's show, and we're going to speak about the recreation, the parks, the beaches, the experience, and what we do to protect it. Why is this town has gotten so great? Experience. I served in the New York State Assembly, 14 years, I rose to become the Nassau Conference leader to three political parties. I sat on the Environmental Conservation Committee. Protecting the environment is one of the most important aspects of my job Mm -hmm. and something I take very seriously and something we've accomplished quite a bit, providing for the recreation space of our town. Our parks are rated among the best parks in America. Turf fields, swimming pools, We have so much for our residents, and it's pretty inexpensive to live here. The town portion of one's property taxes is $144 a month for the average homeowner. I think you really have to point your finger at that and illuminate that idea because people— well, first Property of all, you, taxes you, in you, general are high, and you, they think it's us. Well, exactly right. But exactly it's not. Right. The town's portion— of the property taxes paid is only 13%, and it averages out for the average taxpayer as $144 a month. 
less expensive than that. Than everything else. <laughs> there, you're right. Your monthly bill for cable, TV, internet access, and a home phone nobody uses. I know. I complain all the time when, when I come back home and I tell my girlfriend, you know, I shouldn't have done it. She said, what? I said, I went out. Oh, okay. I come back home. I am always $100 poor. So that's why we provide so many great concerts, activities for mm-hmm. kids, activities for seniors, lessons, because it's all free. We call it stay vacations or staycations right. because you can save so much money. Yes, I understand everybody wants to go to the Taylor Swift concert or the Chris Stapleton concert or whoever it might be. But there, and for young people, the White Stripes and all the cool bands, Mm -hmm. uh, and I'm a musician and we can talk a little bit about that. I've been a musician for years. But what we are doing is saving people money because you don't always have to go to a a show and pay hundred, two hundred, five hundred dollars for concert tickets. Our music under the stars program is phenomenal. We've won awards and it's free. Our programs in the parks, whether it's come out and skate, we provide free golf days for veterans. We provide free activities for so many people, art lessons, all kinds of uh, environmental programs in in all of our facilities. But as I promised a moment ago, I'm going to show the difference between 2017 and now 2023, the immense turnaround that my experience has helped to achieve. In Mm -hmm. 2017, we had a budget deficit. We owed a $44 $44 million. Our budget was not balanced. Today, we have a surplus of $88 million while cutting taxes. Wow. I cut taxes in the 2018 budget, $1.3 million. And I have frozen taxes every year since now, six years in a row. And we've just released, we held the hearings, the public hearings on our 2024 budget. No one complained about a single aspect of it, and we passed it before Election Day for tremendous transparency. Mm -hmm. We won an award, an A-plus from the Empire Center for transparency, and many other good government groups have been talking about and awarding the town of Oyster Bay for our performance. Do you have some ideas about what you might do with that $88 million? Yes, part of it is designed to include and increase our bond rating. What happens is Wall Street gives a rating to every municipality so that when we borrow money, they look at the rating and you hire your rating the less you pay in interest costs. So at at the beginning, when I came to the town in 2017, they had junk bond status, the very lowest rating, the worst rating you could get. That went up and up and up since I have been working here as the supervisor. We've had 12 notches of increase in our bond rating, and we were in an A-plus bond rating, and now we're just a couple of steps away from a perfect triple A bond rating. That says that Wall Street has looked carefully at the town's functions and is rewarding us for our work. You got a pretty good report card. Well, that's not all. (laughs) The the New York State Controller gives an assessment grade to every municipality, towns, counties, villages, school districts, and gives them a grade from zero to 100. It's called the fiscal grade municipal fiscal stress list. 100 is the worst grade. Back in 2017, we were the fourth worst municipality in the state with a grade of 91. Mm -hmm. Our 2022 number was released in 23 because Mm -hmm. they want to look at the total job you've done in the year, uh, 2022. And our grade is zero, a perfect score. Wow. We went from 91 to zero, no fiscal stress. So as you accumulate a surplus, it allows for you to borrow less to get projects right. done, whether it's buying a golf course and next year we'll have a, a stellar 18-hole golf yeah. course, which is in Woodbury that we get all kinds of awards for, but we'll also have a nine-hole golf course in Massapequa, one north, one ah, south. That's and great. we're going to buy that without borrowing money. 
Nobody can argue with that. I, 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 I don't see an argument anywhere. There's but. also the theory of always having a rainy day fund. If Amen. there is a hurricane, major snowstorms, mm -hmm. you don't want to have to borrow money to deal with the expensive issues associated with a problem. Which we know are coming. Which, yeah, of No course. matter what you do. I, yeah, yeah. I get it. Yeah. And Let me do some quick business. You're listening to this week's Long Island News on the Voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC. My name is Bill McIntyre, and my guest today is Joseph Saladino, the supervisor of the town of Oyster Bay, who's running for re-election this upcoming election day on the Republican ticket. That's and I'm the supervisor for everyone, whether you're a Democrat, whether you're a Republican, whether you're registered to vote or not. We deal with everyone's issues and we bring solutions to everyone. Very strong environmentalists. We've done a build out on our uh, North Shore project, which is our shellfish hatchery. Uh -huh. We first year we put uh, just about a million shellfish seeds back into the environment and then three million the next year and then five million. This year we're putting 12 million back. Wow. The hatchery grows these seeds out. When we get them, they're not much bigger than the size of the head of a pin. When we grow them out to a little bigger than a, a quarter, or if people remember the silver dollar, oh, yeah, right. <laughs> young people might not remember <laughs> yeah, those, but right. some folks have it in the safe deposit box. Yeah, yeah. So when it's that large, the predators can't get it. And we have a sustainability rate of almost 100%. Mm -hmm. What does that do? Well, if you like shellfish, it makes sure there's always a tremendous supply. But many people work in the industry of harvesting shellfish. But it does something far more important. And I know you're all paying attention right now as you turn your radio up on WHPC. Each crustacean, each clam, each oyster can filter out 50 gallons a day. When you multiply that times the 12 million we put back into the environment in the harbor in Oyster Bay, not only does it make oysters sustainable, make sure there's always a supply for decades to come, but it, they clean the water better than they are God's uh, or nature's filter. Yeah, yeah. So we're seeing our water quality go up and up and up. We've spent money on projects to improve parking and to keep the runoff from going into the bay. These are just some of the many ways that we're improving our town. So we're replacing the turf fields with state-of-the-art best products. Go to the town's fields. We're doing them on the North Shore, the South Shore. We've repaved 35% of our roads at a million dollars a mile. We commit $25 million per year to our road repaving program. And don't worry, if your road in the town of Oyster Bay has not been paved yet, we are getting to we'll it. We'll get to you, right? <laughs> People will say, oh, yeah, we'll pave. I'll, if I'm the supervisor, I'll pave all the roads in one year. A, it's impossible yeah. because there aren't enough companies out there to do that. Right. And B, your bond rating would crash. It would cost more every time you borrow money. Yeah. We have an almost perfect bond rating now. We started as junk bond status. So, so in effect, it's cheaper for us to do our roads because the bond rating. It's cheaper. considerably cheaper. We save over $10 million a year on the interest we pay on debt service alone. It's like refinancing your home mortgage at a lower rate. Right. You save an enormous amount of money. Mm -hmm. Why do I know this? 35 years of experience. I served on the Ways and Means Committee in Albany in the New York State Assembly and handled one of the largest municipal budgets in the country. So it's about experience. Yeah, yeah. If you go and you need a, a surgery on a tooth, you don't go to somebody who's just graduated dental school. <laughs> you want someone with some experience. Yeah. If you uh, step onto a flight on a plane, you want a pilot who's been doing this for a while. Yeah. Same goes in running such a large town. I remember in New York City, uh, the controller at one point, I don't remember whose administration it was, but uh, it, it it took me back a little bit because the big news story was that he had figured out if he put all of the city's money in banks overnight that they'd realize $40 million more than they had in the morning. Something that simple. 
There are so many steps. But it was experience that it's brought that to the table. experience that happens. All of those big money guys with the pencils and the actuarials, and they hadn't figured that out in 100 years of governing in the city. And Bill, it's more than just the 35 years experience that I bring to the table. It's a tremendous love and understanding of the operations of government. My first job was in the media where I learned how to peel back the layers of the onion. I have a master's degree in journalism. Then I went on to the town of Hempstead after working in radio and television news. I went on to the town of Hempstead and worked for the supervisor of America's largest township. And then I went to Oyster Bay and I worked in different capacities to understand the building department needs. And that's why we made it less expensive to do building projects in the town of Oyster Bay and same day permits for many of the uses. You get your permit the same day that you come and apply for it. So we're making government efficient. We're working for the residents of all ages. Our parks are phenomenal. But let me tell you a story about a beach. We all like going to the beach, right? Whether you're especially, driving. Especially on Long Island. We especially. Like going to the beach. <laughs> each year we lose Tow Bay Beach, that gem of a beach right mm-hmm. next door to Jones Beach. We lose it to big wave action and the aspects of a more uh, bigger tyrant in nature for a variety of uh, environmental reasons. We came up with a plan to truck 44,000 tons of sand from a sand mine out way out on the east end and bring it to Tobey Beach. And now we rebuild our beach every spring and we get it done under budget and we get it on time for the first Saturday of Memorial Day weekend. There's a brand new beach where there was none before Mm -hmm. because of the wave action taking the beach away. It's things like that, understanding how to do it, understanding how to do it cost effectively and putting the residents first. With our administration, we work for you, and I mean you who's listening to WHPC right now. Well, the thing that grabs me is the fact that you're rather than uh, reacting to something bad that happened, you're You've prepared the beach for the season before the issue occurred. Before you have the problem. What a novel idea, being ready for stuff. And we did that during the (laughs) pandemic. We had the lowest infection rate of any major town in New York State. Why? Because we put our people together, healthcare people, our experts from the fire departments, emergency responders, all the different administrators. I put a team together. We never ran out of PPE. We knew how to provide for our residents, how to keep them safe. We got the state to open up outdoor dining earlier than was proposed. And now I'm pushing for outdoor dining because we love downtown Hicksville, where we're doing a major build out to build a cool transit oriented downtown that's perfect for our young people and to provide all the different ways for people to really enjoy a cost effective and very exciting new Oyster Bay. Wow. And that just scratches the surface. And I'm just, I'm sitting here thinking of all the things you have to juggle to make that that puzzle work. That's okay. Uh, I have the experience to get it done. We have a proven record of success. Yeah, yeah. Whether it's the projects that are now breaking ground in Hicksville, if people use the Hicksville Railroad Station, you'll see new areas, paved areas for pop-ups. You can buy your coffee, live music. You can buy fresh muffins. You can buy produce on the weekends. Yeah. Reasons to stay. We're allowing rooftop dining to be built so we can have all these cool different restaurants and not only the restaurants that cost a tremendous amount of money i know what it's like to be a student i know what it's like to live on a budget so we also have cost effective places where you can get a great meal making downtown hicksville and downtown oyster bay real cool places to visit to enjoy we just renamed the street outside of uh, town hall mm-hmm. President Theodore Roosevelt Way. And around the corner by his motorcycle shop, we just renamed the street after Billy Joel. (laughs) And we had Billy Joel in town, and he was fabulous. I'm a musician. Mm -hmm. So an opportunity to meet Billy Joel and hang out with him. I even offered if he ever needs a backup drummer or a substitute (laughs) drummer, I'm available. I'm sure he's got quite a list. We share that in common. I also uh, am a musician. Um, 
I play in a classic rock band, but I'm very good friends with Mike Flintz, who mm. is the lead guitar player for the band Riot. Yeah. A lot of people like more heavy metal music and so forth, and Mike is amazing with Riot. And he, we Tell play me you're talking together. about Mike DeMeo. Mike Flintz. Oh, okay. I, I the, happen to know the keyboard player. Oh, you do? Yeah, yeah. So Mike uh, Flintz is in the um, Heavy Metal hu yeah, Music cool. Hall of Fame, and when he was inducted, uh, Slash, the guitarist, yeah. asked to sit next to him, and it's indoors in California, and Slash has got a lit cigarette and that high hat, not worried about <laughs> any blocking any views, smoking a lit cigarette indoors where you're not allowed to, and just being Slash. Being rock and roll. He, yeah. Being rock and roll. Mm -hmm. He turns to Mike Flintz and says, really big fan, man. Really big fan. <laughs> well, you know, there's an interesting thing about, uh, I've wanted to talk to you about this, and uh, maybe we'll, we'll, off the mic, we'll talk a little more, um, uh, about the original music on Long Island. It needs, it needs a kick in the pants. It needs a, a, a booster, because we've got our flood of tribute bands. We've got our regular bar bands that play all cover material. But you, Long Island is a very rich, musical area but not just uh, when when we play a gig like if you wrote a song and you were covered by bmi or ascap every time you got asked to play at a club bmi would pay you so you wouldn't have to worry about how many people came in the front door one only has to look at our music under the stars program yes the bands like the new york well, bgs I'm and just the saying cover that, bands are right, popular right. but we also right. showcase musicians who perform uh, their own music that's what we need the place to visit is oysterbaytown.com that's our website right. oysterbaytown.com interestingly enough i played with billy joel at a place called uh, the daisy in amityville back in 1969 wow very before any cool. before anybody knew who he was he hadn't gone to california yet hadn't come back uh, so he can identify with that you know you just write a song how do you get it out there Everybody's got a web page. Everybody's got, you know, uh, Spotify is paying you one thousandth of a cent to play it. You know, the joke was, I just got a million plays on Spotify. Here's my check. It's eight bucks. You know, it's you interesting know. you bring this up because the same occurs in the town of Oyster Bay in terms of getting our message out. We increased our transparency by greatly increasing our digital footprint mm -hmm. on social media sites, emailing out. And if you haven't signed up for information in the town of Oyster Bay, go to our website, Oyster Bay Town, and sign up to be receiving our email blasts. We do this in so many ways, from press conferences, to mailers, to emails, to always to teach people why we're doing things. It's part of the reason that Newsday endorsed me, all of the environmental groups in, endorsed me, from all of the police unions, all of the builders who are trying to create more housing for our town. Mm. We're about to break ground now on three separate po projects in Hicksville to make a cool downtown with 500 new housing units, 500 new apartments for people, including young people, to come and live that's a, a short walk from the railroad station. Mm. This is what transit-oriented development right. is all about. Yeah. And this is why we're continuing to push forward for this housing. When the governor sent out that proposal to take mm -hmm. away our zoning powers, which really means taking a voice away from the people yeah. because there's no more hearings. But the people did scream and she did back down. She backed down okay. from that project now, and I was one of the leaders on now, that to me, proposal. That's how government's supposed to work. Same someone, thing happened when someone they- Someone comes out with a lame brain idea and the population is supposed to stand up and say, that's a lame brain idea. You can't do that. And our leaders listen to us, we listen to them. Bill, a perfect example yeah. is when the previous governor wanted to build an enormous bridge or tunnel from Oyster Bay to Rye, New York, that would have had enormous impacts, negative impacts on the environment. Right. We stopped that. Yep. We gave him a proposal for another site outside of the town of Oyster Bay that made a lot more sense. That would have destroyed 
the bay, the harbor, and the air quality. And we are one, uh, absolutely our priority is environmental protection, whether we're cleaning up the underground groundwater and our underground aquifer system where we derive all of our drinking water, unlike New York City, we don't have a, a river coming uh, down from upstate. We drill down and we pump water out of the ground deep below the earth. The Grumman, the Northrop Grumman Company, when they were building the planes for World War II yeah. and Vietnam, left behind all kinds of contaminants and carcinogens. It's safe to drink the water at the tap because the water districts spend quite a lot of money in order to ensure that these contaminants are filtered out. Yeah. I understand this. I got legislation passed in Albany when I was a state assembly member, and now they are building the treatment facility to clean up the Grumman Navy plume underneath yeah. Beth Page. Yeah, yeah. Well, one of the issues that I used to be in the building uh, industry, selling building materials, but I remember when, uh, I don't remember where the law started, but it was this idea that we had to treat all the rainwater. In the old days, you know, when you and I were kids, the rainwater went back into the bay. Now, obviously, with pesticides and uh, fertilizers, everybody's using on their lawn, but they passed that law and added millions upon millions of gallons to the available treatment plants. See, when I was a kid, and I'll show you'll remember this, if it rained, we didn't have a policeman on the beach telling us we couldn't go swimming. But you do now because they've taken all that rainwater and pumped it through all of those available wastewater treatment plants. This is why we're investing millions of dollars in projects that divert rainwater so it doesn't go into the bay, it doesn't go into the ocean, it doesn't go into the harbor in Oyster Bay or on the South Shore. We divert it back into these areas where we put sand and gravel and the water filters, filters as it goes down or percolates to recharge the aquifer where we draw our drinking water. Yeah. How do I know this? 35 <laughs> years of experience, well, listen, including gonna, in the state we're, assembly. We're going to run out of time and they're going to tell us to get lost. What do you want to just say to, say to the people that... Uh, there are 10 days of voting that begin the 27th of October and culminate on election day, November 7th. No matter what political party you belong to, you want experience and a proven record of people who listen and build an Oyster Bay for your future. So we're very proud of our record. Newsday's endorsed us, the environmental groups, all of the unions have endorsed us, all of the private sector groups. We virtually got the we earned the endorsement of just about every organization that provides an endorsement. I'm proud of my colleagues on the town board, Vicki Walsh, Laura Meyer, Steve Labriola, our clerk, Jeff, our clerk, uh, Rich Lamarca, and our receiver, Jeff Provado. We're running as a team and we are providing a better Oyster Bay for you. No matter what political party you're from, or if you're not from a political party, get out and vote this year and please reelect the Saladin no team, you won't be disappointed. Yes, and we always tell our listening audience that their their politics is local. Yes. That's really, you know, you can watch the national politics all you want, but... That's so important to not be confused with this. Yeah. We've opened our doors. We're the first town to have celebrations for every group, every walk of life, whether you're Jewish or Islamic, you're white, black, or Chinese, whether you come from an area... A, a, that has success or you come from the poverty of another country, we welcome people in the town of Oyster Bay and we give them an opportunity to have jobs, make a fortune for themselves, have the opportunity of career, buy a home. These are the things people want for the town of Oyster Bay experience. Check us out on our website, which is oysterbaytown.com. I'm Supervisor Joe Saladino. Thank you, Bill McIntyre. It's a pleasure to be on this week's Long Island News right here on 90.3 WHPC. He does it better than me. But anyway, my guest today has been Joseph Saladino, the supervisor of the town of Oyster Bay, who's running for re-election this upcoming election day on the Republican ticket. And again, we want to thank you for taking the time to be 
here today to speak with us. And also, good luck with the campaign. But the clock on the wall says it's time for this week's Long Island News to get on out of here. I'm Bill McIntyre. Remember, you can listen to us by searching for this week's Long Island News wherever you listen to podcasts. And we're right here every Friday at 3 p.m. on the radio on the voice of Nassau Community College, 90.3 WHPC.